And it's going to be continuing to be a pretty nice evening across central Florida. But they had some rain earlier today. Let's go out live to meteorologist George Waldenberger. He joins us there live. George, you found out just what it takes to get the track dry for a race. Yeah, Tom, I'm looking at the speedway just like you are, and it's actually hard to believe that just a few hours ago, it was all wet from the stands to the track, even to the pit right now all dry. The only evidence of rain, just a few puddles on the pavement right there. But if it weren't for the track drying team, the track may actually still be a little bit wet. It's almost here, the Daytona 500, and cars are already racing the track. Hard to believe just a few hours ago it was raining and the track was soaking wet. Typically we go out first and we remove all the water from the track after the rain quits. And as the as it goes on, on any given year, the biggest threat to race weekend tends to be rain. Playing defense to all this is the track drying team. Consisting of two types of giant blowers. First out, the air titans. In the back of the truck, there's an engine similar to a car motor forcing air through these tubes, which in turn goes into the smaller tubes and then through this blade, forced through this tiny slot at high pressures. Pretty, pretty hard. We can feel it when they, when we go by them. It, it'll actually move the truck around. It's, it's pretty powerful. After two passes by these Titans, the second team of blowers pass using either a downdraft or side draft. Total time to dry depends on the size of the track. We can uh, we can drive Bristol and Martinsville in less than 25, 30 minutes. The longest, uh, Daytona. We could have Daytona ready to race in under three hours. Now, whether the speedway is uh, made out of concrete or asphalt, that also pays, plays a role in how long it takes to dry. This is asphalt. It's more porous and it can hold more water, so it takes a little longer to dry. But thankfully... There's not much of a rain chance this weekend, very low. So hopefully we don't have to see those dryers at all, but they'll always be ready. Reporting from Daytona International Speedway, I'm certified meteorologist George Waldenberger, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, George, I appreciate how you and your photographer actually gave us in-car camera video of the jet dryers. Now take a look at this. Jet dryers did make headlines in 2012. A driver lost control during the Daytona 500, slammed into a jet dryer. Juan Pablo Montoya was not hurt as he climbed from his burning car. A track worker helped the driver of that jet dryer out safely. No injuries there. The track was damaged from this amazing inferno. After the crash, those jet dry drivers were required to wear fire suits and helmets. But how about that video we pulled back from the archives? Wow.